Friends, this is your daily inspiration. I'm Pastor Kylie Lemons, and I serve as the executive pastor of New Birth Church. I want you to do me a favor. Share with someone right now that you're watching because sharing the gospel is as easy as clicking a button. On the behalf of my senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Bryant, thank you for allowing us to connect with you. So during the next few moments, let's lean into the word of God. If you feel comfortable, let's use some emo emojis to talk to me. Comment in the thread. Share with others that you are watching and jot down some notes to strengthen your journey beyond the moment. Listen, today I want to talk about what is an essential worker? Now, you know, you've heard this said before, and that's what I want to talk about essential workers and what we can take away as believers during this real life moment. I was reading an article from the Washington DC news column, The Hill, and they shared that at least 38 states have issued statewide stay at home orders impacting 300 million Americans across 48 counties and 14 cities. My family lives in the state of Georgia and our governor, Brian Kemp, recently issued a shelter in place order. Now, from the outset of this directive, one would assume that everybody in the state would be off the road. They would be in the house going nowhere. However, when I look at it, I'm seeing cars are still driving. Certain stores are still open. And I began to ask myself, how? How are people still moving when they're supposed to be staying at home? Then I recently read a Newsweek article that reported even amid our country shutdown, some industries are just too essential to be closed and would remain open. And I began to pray and I began to hear the Lord speak to me about essential workers through the lens of our society and spiritually. You know, society has spoken that our supermarkets, hospitals, gas stations, banks will all be identified as essential workers and too critical to stay at home. So here is your dose of spiritual inspiration for the moment. Here it is. You are too essential to stay where you are. I wish you heard me. You are too essential to stay where you are. Now, I'm not saying you need to run out the house. No, stay your tail at home. But let this speak to your spirit. You are too essential to stay where you are. You are too essential to keep living like this. I want to encourage you today not to allow this current stationary position to stagnate your conviction to progress. When it comes to what God told you, you have to be unwavered by the circumstance, unbothered by the opinions of others. You see, some people feel that this restriction of life limits their progress. I want to encourage you to use your faith and speak over yourself and declare this is not a restriction. This is a refining and the Bible is clear that after you have come out of the fire, after you have been in the refining, you're going to come out as pure gold. You know, our society is so captivated by what glitters. We don't even properly vet to see if it's real gold. You know, we got a lot of fake gold around here, everybody. Oh, we got a lot of cubic zirconiums around here, everybody. But I have found that some of the things that we call essential is really artificial. <laughs> Just by the term alone, the word artificial means a man-made production rather than something occurring naturally. Also termed as a person whose behavior is insincere. So in other words, it can look like the real thing. It can sound like the real thing, but it is self-made, man-made. And you know what I've learned? Anything that is self-made will eventually self-destruct. Many of you who are watching right now know that you did not get here on your own. You are not self-made. You are not man-made, but it has been nothing but the hand of God that has been on your life and that has gotten you this far. And when you are pursuing an essential life, can we just pause right here? Can you just, just share with somebody right now? Can you just do that? Because when you are living and pursuing an essential life, you cannot surround yourself with artificial people. During moments like these, you need to be your own governor and hold your own press conference 
and call your own life's executive order and say everything and anyone who is artificially placed in my life needs to go home immediately and never return. I need somebody to talk to me in here because I need to tell someone the devil is outside of his jurisdiction and he has come too far and he now needs to come in compliance with what the word of God says. So whatever comes out of your mouth is what the devil has to align to. So can I just tell you this real quick? The devil is under your feet and you need to say it. Please forgive me. I used to watch a show called Sister, Sister, and they used to say every time they would get annoyed with their neighbor, go home, Roger. Will you just tell the devil that it's time for you to go home? Can I share something with you? Insincere people rent the space of your sincerity with God. Now, right now, you need to write what and who is crowding your space because it is important to watch who you allow in your space because there is too much at stake for you in this moment to miss your moment with God. I believe more than ever, it is essential that we grow a yearning for the presence of God. That we start saying, Lord, teach me how to experience you that grows my faith. Teach me how to trust you in times like these. I believe anything that is essential is not artificial. And anything that is essential is greater than beneficial. Yeah, you heard me correctly. I said anything essential is greater than anything beneficial because you know what beneficial is beneficial is only something that produces good results or helps effects and our society and culture cringes over the loss of real first world problems. Oh man, listen, we are now experiencing what others would term as third world problems, but majority of our issues have really been first world problems. Oh, my battery is almost gone and I don't have my charger. What am I going to do? You know, that's a first world problem. I don't want to eat this. I'll just figure out something else to eat later because this doesn't work for me. First world problem. I don't drink water out the faucet. First world problem. Oh, I don't hang out in those type of areas. First world problems. Now don't get me wrong. We all love benefits. Seriously. Yes, we do. We all love benefits because when you are hired on the job, the salary is always a great starter conversation, but the benefits package, the health insurance, the PTO, the short term and long term disability, dental vision and life insurance, those items in the benefits package, sweeten and solidify a lot of us as employees. And if you get a bag, you know, sisters, if you get a bag, Louis, Fendi, Prada, whatever it may be, you know, that's beneficial because it shows that you have taste and you're willing to invest in what you carry on your shoulder. For my fellas, even, you know, you get yourself a car, you know, you got some rims on that thing and you try to showcase how you transport and how you move throughout. You, you, you know the, the benefit of it. And then even if you get married, you know, and you purchase your spouse a ring, she's showing it off to everybody <laughs> because she wants everybody to see what's going on in her life. These are all areas that are beneficial, but here's the reality. They're not essential. Because we can live without a bag, we can move without a car, and we can get married without a ring. And just because we enjoy it doesn't justify that it is as essential. <laughs> that means, friends, that sometimes you got to release people out of your life who you enjoy but who are not essential. I just released somebody from a relationship right now. I didn't tell you to break up with them. Your spirit just told you to. By definition, what is essential? It is the utmost importance. I want you to hear that again. What is essential? It is the utmost importance. I then ask us spiritually, what is essential to the life of a believer in a time like this? I just want to give you one essential. I don't, I don't have a lot. I just want to give you one essential. I want you to get your writing instrument now because I'm going to share some scriptures with you that I believe that you need in your heart in this essential moment as you are an essential worker. The, here it is. The item that you need right now that is essential is a heart. A heart is an essential worker to the life of a believer. Proverbs 13 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. Proverbs 423 says, above all else, guard your heart, which indicates that your heart is of utmost importance.
because everything from your heart flows your life. There is nothing more important than protecting your heart, which is why the Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 17, that the Lord searches our hearts so much so that King David has made a huge mistake. He's really apologetic about it. And he says in Psalms 51, create in me a clean heart. Consider God doesn't even look at the outward appearance, but what does he look at? Our heart. Matthew 5, 8 says that blessed are the pure, watch it, in heart, for they will see God. Did you know that the first and greatest commandment starts in Matthew chapter 22, verse number 37? It says it's in the book. It says it right there. Love the Lord your God with all of your, there it is, heart. Because an uncontaminated heart is an essential worker during life's inconveniences, and it will keep your faith moving even when you may feel stuck. The Bible says it even more. Can I give you all the word? The word have I hidden, where do you hide it? In my heart, that I might not sin against it. The Lord has, has a conversation with his disciples and he's, he's in a very trying season in John chapter 14, verse number one, and watch what he tells his disciples. I want you to really cap capture this moment. Are you ready? Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. I need you to hear me. Your heart is an essential worker right now. The heart is a simple organ. The complexity pales in comparison to the brain. The heart has uh, one very straightforward job to do. Pump the blood. If the heart keeps beating, the blood keeps flowing. Don't let your heart be troubled. Why? Because the blood still works. Let not your heart be troubled because the blood is moving on your behalf. I was recently in the store grabbing some oils uh, for our food during this pandemic. I'm, you know, guys, I'm picking up vegetable oil, olive oil, coconut oil, flaxseed oil. And I think I'm good. And my wife says, hey, babe, before you leave the store, do me a favor. Can you pick up some essential oil? I'm thinking to myself, essential oil? I go back into the store, I locate the item, I look at the bottle, and I notice that it was not for food. But it was an aromatherapy that is believed in some studies to have therapeutic effects on people with heart disease. That it can lower anxiety and stress, which are all risk factors to high blood pressure. And the Lord began to speak to me in a, in a very unique way in that moment in the store. And I was getting ready to leave the store without, watch it, essential oil. Can I share something with you? The oil wasn't for food. The oil was for the body. Can I share this with you, friends? The oil of God that is on your life is for the body of Christ. And God is saying you are too essential to lose heart now. He says, I need you to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Don't be moved. Don't be wavered. Don't be perplexed because what God has begun in you, he will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Hold on. Don't give up because you are too essential in this moment. I hear even Esther in my heart. You ask yourself, why am I here right now? You have essential oil. You were born for such a time as this. Hey, listen, friends, I hope you were blessed. I need you to share this with someone because not only are you an essential worker, but so are they. If you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I ask you to do it now. If you don't have a church home, why don't you pray about new birth? Because right now is the right time to say, God, you are the essential source of my life. Everything else is just a resource. Everything else is just a benefit. I want to encourage you to hang on, hold on, because help is on the way. Do you mind if I pray for you? Listen, friends. Father, we thank you. We thank you for making us essential when others wanted to erase us. We thank you. We thank you for making us essential. Even God, when people were putting us near the exit door. 
I thank you, God, for keeping, keeping us on your mind. Lord, thank you that you count the number of hairs on our head. Lord, we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we do know that you hold tomorrow. And this we give your name the praise and we trust it that if you are with us, we are okay. So Emmanuel, thank you for being with us. In Jesus' name, amen. Hey, I'm Pastor Kylie Slimmons, and this is your Daily Inspiration.